Well, hello, it's Wesley with Expandacraft here. I'm behind the camera today. Yes, I'm still wearing my silly pith helmet. So, this is the unsinkable skiff that I have introduced to the Expandacraft lineup. It is made with starboard sidewalls. It is riveted to the aluminum, as you'll see down at the bottom. This comes in a kit form, by the way. Uh, and this bow is like a crash bow. You can smack into a wall. It's, uh, it's pretty tough. This whole boat is quite tough. And it's unsinkable because the entire base of the boat is made with a structurally insulated panel. Now, I'm going to go to the back, and you'll notice that this is an open hole here. We're going to have a flap there. This is where the water will rush out should you get a wave or uh, anything in the boat. It will rush out the back. Uh, Boston Whaler is uh, known for making boats that are foam core. This is not much different. I didn't invent the foam core boat. And I've left this open so that you can see that indeed it is just an aluminum skin over, in this case, it's a three inch foam block. But underneath the boat, I don't know if you can see, but underneath there is another three inch thick foam runner that goes straight down the center. It adds 200 pounds more of flotation. It also acts to stiffen the boat. Uh, and it acts also as kind of a keel that keeps the boat going straight uh, because it's rather straight. In the uh, front, of the boat underneath the boat I have a wood crash bow if you will I, I'm not sure exactly what to call it but it's it's under there it's a solid chunk of wood uh, with a bow shape to it and uh, the reason for that is this is a rental boat and people tre uh, treat rental boats like well harsh <laughs> So what I needed was a boat that was self-bailing, unsinkable, super durable, and cost-efficient. Uh, uh, this is only a 14-footer. I plan to offer 18-footers, 20, and even a 24. We're going to be making a closed um, hull section with a 24-footer uh, with probably more like... Uh, one foot of foam in the middle and that's going to end up being a houseboat a 24 foot houseboat That goes from 8 feet wide on the trailer to 12 feet wide on the water now This kit comes apart like all the other expand the craft kits except Well right here it, it comes apart you can see you got the wing nuts underneath there and the railings you can use the skiff alone because it is wide enough and has plenty of stability on its own, but with the eight foot cross tubes and the 12 foot uh, Expandacraft outriggers with this, this thing will displace over a thousand pounds. So you and a couple of buddies and all your gear, it's not a problem. The water line with this boat with just two people and some gear in board should be, and I haven't splashed it, I'm probably gonna splash it today or tomorrow, waiting for some nice sun, uh, should be right about midway of that aluminum strip along the bottom. This comes to you everything pre-cut, including the aluminum. As you see here, it has the little kerf marks in it. Those kerfs in this angle are so that you can make the curve. And all you really need is a drill gun and a rivet gun. You don't have to worry about sealing anything because the design doesn't have any um, space for water to accumulate. The solid foam base is the flotation uh, and if any water does get in, like I said, it's self bailing and it just washes right out. We're going to test this later with a electric motor as you see here and I'm also going to test a uh, one and a half horsepower uh, gasoline motor just to make a comparison. Uh, you could, if you so desire, um, beef up the transom 
to hold a larger motor, a 5, a 10, whatever. Uh, they certainly have much larger motors on uh, uh, Ginus, which are smaller than this boat. Uh, and a Ginu is not self-bailing. It is not as stable, certainly not as stable as this boat with the 8-foot uh, outriggers. Well, they're 12 feet long outriggers, but they're 8 feet wide. Uh, Expand the Craft is going to offer this as a kit. We haven't priced it out yet, but it's going to come to you in a flat box. And uh, we're going to make some of the things, like the bow shapes and uh, things that need to be formed. Those will be formed, mo most likely molded, so that we can spit them out uh, in production. Uh, this is American-made product. The starboard is actually made here in Florida, where I am. Uh, the metal, including the structurally insulated panel and the aluminum here, is from American Metal Supply, and the structurally insulated panel also is a Florida product. Uh, some are made in Georgia as well that I buy. Uh, this is a pretty good look at the boat out of the water. When we put it in the water, you're going to notice just how shallow it is. Just like I said, there is another, let's see if I can show it. There's another one foot wide by the whole length of the boat, just about uh, foam, uh, kind of a skid plate. It has a, it has a uh, skid plate along the bottom of starboard so that you can drag it around on the rocks. People will also run it into oyster beds and it won't matter. It might scratch the plastic, but nothing's going to hurt this boat and certainly not going to sink. I don't know what it would take to tip one over, but if you did, uh, it would certainly not uh, be a life-threatening thing as the whole boat is just made of foam. Uh, by the way, as far as decking goes, this one, we don't have any decking on it to show right now. We did in some of the other pictures, but we do aluminum decking. However, I just happen to have some leftover foam, and so I thought I'd put a foam, it's about a two and a half foot wide and five or six feet long uh, piece that I can strap down to here, maybe put a little astro turf or outdoor carpet on it, make it nice for your tushy. Uh, seats, whatever you want. Um, they sell seats with four legs and a swivel. And you could put them back here. Uh, you could put a rudder in the back and attach the motor to the wings, if you will. Uh, you have so many options. This boat is wide open. Remember, the only limitation with Expand the Craft is your imagination. So think about what kind of seating you would put in here. You're not relegated to a kayak style or canoe style uh, seat or seating pattern. You can sit sideways and use a tiller extension to run the motor and or bring the motor closer to the cross tube. It steers just fine even with the motor off center and then use a rudder which is much more precise than steering with thrust alone. Uh, however, it's again up to you. You want a bigger motor? Put a, a stouter uh, stern uh, on it, the transom, and you could certainly put well, you wouldn't really need anything more than a five or six horsepower on this 14 footer as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but you could do um, more. I've seen bigger ones on there. I'm not a big power boat guy. If I want to go fast, I'd go get a go fast boat. This is not a go fast boat. This is a go all day boat. And it just doesn't take much fuel to push this lightweight, super efficient. Very simple but sophisticated and durable boat through the water. I'd like to hear your comments uh, on this more than pretty much any uh, of my videos. I need to hear what you think about the boat and about the uh, larger boats that I plan to build, including some that are meant to be dinghies for uh, liveaboard sailors and boaters like that so it won't have such a pointy bow it'll be more of a like a, a dinghy you see hanging off the back of a, a liveaboard boat expandacraft.com please subscribe